I'm in the kitchen now with one of our viewers, and she's a great cook and a great baker. This is Christine Broderson from Hortonville. So Thank good you. to see you. Thank you very much, Amy. Thank you for inviting me. Thanks for coming. Are you kidding? We were thinking chocolate and desserts, and I thought, oh, Christine, <laughs> she just makes some really wonderful over-the-top desserts, and Thank I you. am all about a good chocolate cake. You know, bring it on. This is a really good one, and one of the things I like about it is that you can do the frosting two nights ahead. Oh, I like the that. Cake the next day ahead and then you can serve it the next day so you're not going to be sort of crammed in with all your things love for the it, guests love it so i like that about me this too cake. i'm gonna get to work why don't okay. we start in the frosting and then you can get to work on the cake so okay i'm i'm, I'm doing this in a saucepan is yep. that right okay so you're going to melt the butter okay and that's 10 tablespoons so a stick and two tablespoons okay. it's going to be okay and you're going to melt that in a saucepan okay and then after that melts, then I start adding after the rest of the stuff? After that melts, okay. you're going to add the, um, the brown sugar, one cup of cocoa, okay. two teaspoons of espresso powder, um, and the salt. Okay. Once that sort of simmers, you'll add the cream gradually, and then when it's off the heat, add the vanilla. Okay, Don't I will get to work on that. I love heat. the idea of a little coffee, as I said, I love a, a mocha. Uh, a little chocolate in this cake, or coffee in this chocolate oh, cake. Oh, you know, I think that coffee and chocolate is a match know, made in heaven. I, know, I, know. I mean, you just the yeah. two of them belong together. I'm with you. If you're not into coffee, you really could, you could decrease that by one teaspoon, that espresso powder, or you can omit it all together. But I love coffee, so I think two teaspoons is great. And it's and an es espresso chocolate espresso cake. So, so you have to have it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But the espresso powder can be found in a gourmet shop. Okay, all right, good to know. All right, so I'm melting the butter. Mm -hmm. So uh, how about the cake itself? Okay, the cake itself is gonna just be one stick of unsalted butter. Always use unsalted okay. when you're baking. I think that's that's very important. And you're going to add your sugars. So I'm going to just of sugar. move this a little bit so everyone can see it. Okay. Okay. There we go. Sure. All right. And the brown sugar. And you're going to cream that together. Just this way? Yep. There we go. Okay. Perfect. Okay. And they, they really want you to cream cream that well. It says, you know, let that go for about five minutes. Okay. So while that is working, I'm going to crack the eggs. Okay, and I'm going to get to work. Um, the butter's melting over here. So next I'm going to add, this is cocoa again, yep. right? Mm -hmm. Cocoa powder. Yep. Our espresso goes in right now. Mm -hmm. And the brown sugar. And the brown sugar. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like the idea of brown sugar. Yes. I think that's what makes this cake really wonderful is that brown sugar and buttermilk is in the cake, not mm. in the frosting, but in the cake, mm. and it's so good. That makes it moist, yeah. In the cake itself is a half cup of cocoa, and you're going to mix that with a half cup of water. Oh. You're going to mix that together. You can smell this. I just want to dive in it, like, mm. swim in it. Yes. The frosting, wowie. Dad, can you smell that? I can. Oh. The other thing I love about that is, you know, the frosting is relatively easy, and it doesn't make you take out your your um, beaters and all that. That's and so nice. if, if this cake is a little too putsy for you um, in all of its steps, then um, you could just use it on a box cake, and it, it would be wonderful frosting. True. Good point. Sometimes that's all you have time for, but yep. I do think homemade frosting is, uh, is key. the best is key yes. even on the box cake um, now yes. I just did a pinch of salt in here was that right was I yep. supposed to do more or just, nope, just, just a little a bit okay and now uh, do I need to am I at the point where I can start adding heavy cream yep I think you can gradually or do you want add it hot, the, hotter I think you can add the heavy heavy cream now. okay we're just waiting I'm, I'm assuming for the the brown sugar to really get dissolved in here mm -hmm. so, that, that, so it's not grainy yes okay. exactly and, and then it another. makes that really glossy beautiful look okay okay so, I had my butters really creaming. Okay. I'm going to add my two eggs. Okay, and I'm going to slowly add the cream. It's heavy cream. So this is like a ganache. Oh yeah. It's almost as you, you Now, know. when you're making it and um, and it's on the stove and you've never made a frosting like that before, you might think, I don't think this is working because it is really going um, Liquidy. Liquidy. Yeah, yeah. But it will harden up and be beautiful in the fridge. So you stick it in the fridge. Okay, so I'm And while you're here. doing other things, just occasionally give it a stir. Okay, okay. So this looks, oh my gosh, it does look beautiful. Off the heat, Christine said, and a little vanilla goes in. A pinch of vanilla. 
Now we're going to put this in the fridge and let it harden up a little bit. At that stage, it's just gonna more of a ganache. And then you're saying when you put it in the fridge, it really kind of thickens. So here yes. we go. I just want to dip my finger in here, Christine. I know, it's so but good. But I probably shouldn't. <laughs> it's so, so, such a good frosting. I could now, have this is made with cake flour. This cake flour is not um, just all-purpose flour. Cake flour is um, kind of a specialty flour, and it makes your cakes lighter and fluffier. So when it says cake flour, you have to use cake flour. Right, you can find point. that right in the section of the grocery store where they sell all the okay, flours. Okay, but if you are going to make this cake, that's key, because that's something I normally wouldn't have on hand. So you're no. sifting that. Can I have a little, little teeny? Oh, it's absolutely. Little, I just got to try this frosting. Yeah, it's, it's a little it's bit. so good. And then oh, when yeah. you're also when your recipe mm -hmm. says to sift, even though it's kind of, you know, it's kind of a pain, you really should. Just because it'll get that nice texture. It really, cake. it really yeah. will make a difference. So there's the flour. So we're kind of running out of time. I don't want to okay, hurry you, yep. but I just want to kind of. Okay. And then you're going to add the flour and the buttermilk. Now that looks like one cup, but actually it's a half cup mixed with a half cup of warm water. And that's another key ingredient to this one. Buttermilk yeah. makes it so good. Mm. So you're going to have, um, when it says alternate between liquid and your dry ingredients, always begin and end with your dry ingredients. All right, so then this batter gets into um, a buttered pans. We're doing a layer you know, cake. I always use that spray, sure. and it works fine for me. Okay. Um, Bakes for about how long? Flour. It's about 18 to 19 minutes. Okay. If you have a double oven, use both ovens. And if you don't, reverse them through so they get heated evenly. So about Great 9 idea. minutes in, Great switch idea. them out. And then we've got the cake already here yes. with the, the frosting in, yep. in between the layers. And I can mm -hmm. hardly wait to have a piece of it. Thank you so much, Christine. Thank you. Christine's not done yet. She's also okay. brought along a, um, an Oreo truffle recipe. So I can hardly wait to make that a little later. Thanks. For